Wanna know how the pros make the shows that you stream? Well, you're in the right place. It's your Hollywood dream with Cynthia Shung. You ever wondered what a pitch looks like, especially over Zoom? I had a class where they gave their final pitch presentations. The class had them making their pitch decks for 10 weeks. And then at the end of the 10 weeks, they all got to present their pitches and their pitch decks. There was one which had everyone in stitches, and I thought it would be great to share it. I hope you enjoy it. Brave. <laughs> Brave. Yeah. Here we go, big sperm. Come on now. <laughs> Hype me up. Hi. All right, Rafe. I almost want to put these shades on, but I'm, I'm not going to put the shades on. I, kind of, I did make one attempt to do something creative that is a technical leap. It might change the the pitch deck game forever as we know it, uh, but hopefully it works out. Thank you everyone for the time. Um, I would love to tell you guys about my show, This Actually Happened. It is an adult animated comedy. This follows the tale of a sperm who is quite literally thrust into adventure, into the female reproductive system, engaging in a story we've all been through, we just don't know. And I'm here to tell this story to you guys. So I want you to imagine something. I want you guys to imagine Osmosis Jones with Sausage Party and a little bit of Squid Game. I want you to think of them having a menage a trois. One of them gets pregnant and has birth to a child. That child is my show. This actually happened. Hey, Rafe, you're doing great so far. Keep up the good work. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that, coming from a legend like yourself. Anytime, kid. You can really tell that you didn't put this all together last minute. Dude, come on. Just get to the logline already. Okay, my bad. Upon being ejaculated into the female reproductive system, a deeply confused sperm must race against millions of his peers in a cutthroat battle to the death. Huh. Thanks, Mr. Logline. Now let's get into the juicy part. We fade in in a crappy fast food restaurant in middle America, where we find a truck driver who begins to flirt with a young, naive female cashier. She leaves a note in his food telling him to meet in the bathroom. So they meet in the bathroom and engage in unprotected sex in the bathroom stall of this, bath of this fast food restaurant. From there, we zoom into the man's zipper where we were suddenly brought into the inside of his nether region. Uh, we meet an entire sea of sperm, and this is where we are introduced to our litany of characters. Our protagonist, Uh, who is named after the first word he says. He is very innocent because he doesn't know any better and also is confused because we just met him at the dawn of his existence. Uh, he deals with an existential crisis throughout the series. He is very confused why he's here, where he is, how he is, what he is. He doesn't know anything about himself and is, is on a constant mission to find that. He eventually becomes somewhat nihilistic, not really sure why anything matters. Uh, he has a very average build of all the sperm, and uh, he could be voiced by someone like Michael Sarah. We then have I, his best friend and his sidekick, short for I don't know. He's very upbeat, optimistic, and quite literally goes with the flow. He's got a slightly chubbier build, um, so he's not the likeliest victor. And someone like John C. Riley could very easily voice him. We then meet Hammy, his love interest, who's not as into uh as he's into her, but there's there's a little spark there. Um, she came up with her own name, showing she has a little bit more initiative than you know the other doofuses she works with. She's pretty as far as the sperm goes, very competitive, and ironically has the balls that her two comrades do not have. Um, she has major tomboy vibes, as if she were raised by two older brothers, and Sarah Silverman is someone who could very easily voice her. We then meet Bruh who's the antagonist of the series. He's the alpha sperm. He's the most athletic and is very expected to win the race at the end. Um, he only knows swimming forward. He is very afraid of losing and doing anything other than just annihilating anybody in his way. Uh, he's very Machiavellian. Um, you know, his means are knocking anyone out of the competition and his ends are staying alive and getting to the end of whatever the hell he's racing in, which are pretty understandable. Um, and Eric Andre is someone who could play him. So then these folks are suddenly thrust into the reproductive system of the cashier. To my knowledge, it is the only hero's journey where the call to adventure is also a climax. Um, I don't know. Someone could double check that, but I think, I think I'm on the head with that. 
Uh, as far as the episodes, I sort of just went over the first episode. Uh, it's only four episodes. The second episode, the sperm will go through the second part of ejaculation. You know, we sort of end on a cliffhanger. They pass through the cervical canal and then get their way through the uterus. Um, at this point, most of the sperm are dead. The third episode is the most difficult stage they'll get to, the fallopian tubes. They have to decide which one to go into in the first place. Uh, and then once they're there, they have to swim rapidly upstream. They reach the egg by the end of that episode. And then by the fourth episode, they're making their last push for the egg. A victor is crowned and goes through the stages of fertility. Um, as for the why me and why now, believe it or not, I was once upon a time a sperm, as hard as it is to believe. Um, in addition to that, I was kind of like, uh, you know, as most people are wondering what they're supposed to do with their lives in this very overwhelming world. Um, I think this is especially prevalent for my generation with all the negative effects of social media and whatnot. And especially post COVID, I know mental health has taken a toll for the worst, um, to my knowledge. In addition to that, I too was a really bored student once upon a time. And I felt very unengaged by a lot of subject material. I've always found science and biology very intriguing, but I don't think it's taught in a way or displayed to students where they'll find it entertaining and want to watch more, learn more. So my dream is for kids to watch this and say, this actually happened. Oh, dear goodness. Outstanding. <laughs> this was great. Uh, let's get some thoughts, Katrina. Um, I just, I, I laughed through the whole thing. And I had a comment in the chat, if the egg has any lines, because representation matters. But I do think you're limiting yourself to just four episodes. I would like to see the egg and sperm, you know, talk it out, flirt. I the appreciate usual tension. that. You, you nailed the comedy, man. And uh, yeah, I think just thinking about like overarching story, like a little more in the pitch, like, you know, like from a thematic standpoint, like, is it like a story of, you know, because you have the bra character who's like the guy who's expected to win. And then you kind of have this underachieving sperm. Uh, is it kind of like a, uh, you know, like an underdog story kind of thing and like maybe leaning into that a little bit more you got the funny uh, guy, and that's what matters you know Rafe I just want to say I would love to see more like what Katrina said about the egg I'd love to see the egg play hard to catch because the truth is like every egg doesn't get impregnated so fast and it often takes more than 30 minutes and lots of women have lots of I mean it's just not every single time bam is so I'd love to see the egg more like involved. Thank you guys very much thank you for all the kind words I pre I'm gonna send all of this to my mom there you have it Rave's pitch it gave us a sense of what you could do with your imagination, with creativity, with a few tools, and just really your own unique personality. Keep writing, keep being creative, and I'll see you in the next video.